right, so welcome back again. So we're gonna talk about this time our task queues. Uh, so task queues are Google's way of letting you do longer tasks. So App Engine, the way it works is it's meant to receive like get request and post request, um, you know, do some work on it and give a response as fast as it can. Maybe it's a, a JSON reply, maybe it's an HTML page, uh, but they should be quick, right? So like you should always be looking at like things that are like one or two seconds, quick, quick, quick. Uh, they will let you go longer than that. If you go 60 seconds, though, they, they just throw your request in the trash, right? Nothing should take longer than 60 seconds. So what do you do if you do want to do something that's longer? Let's say you, you've set up a website that, you know, you're going to send all of your users an email if you click on this button and it, it sends them out and you've got a million users, right? You don't want to wait for a million emails to get sent and then have your page come back and say, hey, done sending emails. Um, or if you're doing like a, a data migration, that's another big thing. Like all of your data in your database, you want to go through and add another field to it uh, and calculate it. You know, you don't want to do that with a request. I mean, it would probably take over 60 seconds. You would probably just never get it done. The way Google does this is with task queues. There are two types of task queues. There's a thing called push queues uh, and pull queues. Uh, we are going to talk only about push queues. And there's a lot of good ways to learn about them. So there's a video link here if you want to kind of learn the basics of task queues with Google App Engine. Turns out, though, they've made a library for making some things easier for you, assuming what you're doing is a fairly straightforward task. Um, and everything I've ever done is actually a fairly straightforward task. And so there's this library called uh, the Deferred Task Library. And man, it makes things easier. Like, you can read the, the definition in here, right? So if you want to bypass all the work of setting it up, uh, you can use this. Uh, if you want to use this library, uh, you have to you have to add something to your app.yaml, which we will do that. And then once you're you're doing it, uh, what you what you have to do is you just have to say uh, deferred dot defer. So in the deferred package, call the function defer. And literally, what you do is you pass it the function. Uh, and then you just pass it any arguments uh, that, that go to that function. And then it takes care of doing it in a background thread, right? It's not really a background thread. It's really just it's sending off that, that task of work and doing it in, in, in a different call. Calls like this actually get 10 minutes before they crash. So you shouldn't do everything in one task. You should break it up into little chunks, right? So we're going to show you how do you break it up into little chunks and this, this deferred task library is going to make it so much easier to do this uh, like background thread operation with, with um, App Engine. So let's go look at the project uh, that you downloaded last time. And go on and open up the importdata.py file. Inside import data, this is the giant list of quotes uh, that we'd like to add. So our goal is just to add all these quotes. Uh, so we're going to do, you know, like 100 plus puts which, to be honest, 100 plus puts, you could probably get away with uh, without task queues, but the right way to do it is task queues. So I thought we'd go ahead and do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, if somebody comes to the path import data, we're gonna have this handler uh, deal with it. And what we wanna have happen is we wanna have it like kick off the background thread uh, and then just redirect the user back to the main page, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna kick off, kick off the background thread uh, the function that we want to call is add movie quotes. Add movie quotes has a bunch of parameters, uh, which you can see if you pass a parameter in, uh, you know, you can set the value, but if you don't, it'll default to all zeros. So that's actually the function that we want to call. Instead of just calling the function, which would make it happen like before it returns control to the user, we're going to use this third dot defer. Uh, and we're going to pass in the name of the function we'd like to call. So instead of calling the function directly, I'm just going to delete that. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to let uh, the deferred uh, call it for us on a different thread. And so that means that if somebody visits this path, um, it's just going to kick that off. Um, and then it's going to let flow control just go right back. So the user is going to think that these quotes got added like instantaneously, right? Um, except for the fact that it's going to kick you back to this path and then you'll have to hit refresh on the page to actually see them. So that's phase one. Kick off the initial one uh, on the background thread. To be honest, we could have done one chunk on the main thread and then the later chunks on a separate thread. So what we're going to do in here is, uh, is it's not too bad. Um, we're going to pass through 
um, a starting index, which is going to start at zero. We're going to calculate where the ending in index is, and we're going to do them in chunks of 10 movies at a time. So it's going to either be 10 greater than the start, um, or if it, if it hits the very end, it's going to be the length of the list. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through, um, and then for each item in the list, uh, so from our start index to our ending index, we're going to increment a counter for the total, uh, and then we're going to see if it exists or not. If it already exists in the database, then do nothing. Uh, just say that we're, we've skipped this one, right? If it does not exist, then we're going to add it to the database. Uh, and you can see that the list is actually a list of lists where the quote is first and the movie is second. And so we're just going to go through and add them one at a time. Um, and then increments a variable called added. And then if it's not done yet, so if ending index was not the end, then what we need to do is we need to call the function again. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically do the same thing. So we're going to say defer dot defer. Uh, we're going to recursively call the function. Uh, except for this time, we're going to pass in parameters, right? So we don't want start index to be zero. Uh, so I'm just going to copy paste that. We actually want the start index to be whatever it was before plus 10. So we're going to move, move the buffer down 10. And then as far as added, skipped, and totaled, we're just going to go ahead and pass those in so that the next round can, can add to them, right? So that's the code that we need to add to use defer dot defer. Um, but we do need to add some other things. If you remember in the, in the instructions, it said you needed to add to um, make sure that app.yaml said that you wanted to use it. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to open up app.yaml, and we're going to have to find the next to-do in here. So the next to-do says add the built-in uh, for the deferred library uh, to make a task queue. So I expect that this is gibberish look, uh, look for you. So it's build-ins, uh, and then what you need to do is you need to say hyphen space, deferred on. So this is a bit of magic. I, I don't doubt that. Uh, but this is basically like adding the library uh, so that you can actually use that deferred module. So that's all we have to do to use this thing. I am going to choose to do a little bit more. And what I'm going to choose to do is I want to make sure that I am the one who kicks this off, right? So I don't want, I don't want some Yahoo uh, just random person to go to my import data path and kick off an imported data. I want to limit it to only me. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to limit it to any admins for this website. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find the next to do uh, and I'm going to start by changing it to a done. And what this is, is this says uh, protect the slash import path so that only admin users can get there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy, uh, just because I'm lazy, what main did down here. So what main did is it caught all URLs. Instead, what we want to do is we want to pick off things that go to the import data path. Um, and so this is how I, I, I'm going to choose to do it. There's a lot of ways to do it. If anybody comes to import data, heck, they could go to any extension of import data. I don't care. I'm still going to serve them the main app, except what I'm going to do is I'm going to say login admin. We've seen login required before. Login admin is similar, except for in order to go here, you have to be an admin uh, of this uh, app engine. So you know that checkbox you always see, it's like, like is admin. We're going to have to actually check that uh, so that we can use this page. All right. Um, if they come here, go to main.app. Uh, Let's go to main.py uh, so that we can change the, uh, the tuples in here for our main.app. Um, and what we need to do is we need to add the tuple uh, for import data. So we just want to say, hey, if anybody comes to import data, the handler that we would like for them to use is under import data, uh, and it is called uh, import data action. Uh, looks lovely. We've already got a comma up above, so it should still be a, a valid uh, list. Time to try this thing out. So what I want to do is I want to go to localhost. Uh, I can see that localhost, I have, I have no data uh, right now, so it's completely empty. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that import data path, uh, and I'm going to watch it uh, load the data. What I'm going to choose to do here is I'm going to actually um, make it to where I can kind of watch both at the same time, because it's kind of interesting to see when it, it kicks off, because it might kick off earlier than you think. 
So if you start going to import data, um, I guess it won't kick off early this time because I have to actually sign in. Um, so what you can see is you can see that there's a bunch of progress messages. It probably asks you to sign in um, and you would have to check uh, is admin. It looks like I had already done that. So there it's done. Uh, it added, uh, it looks like what I've got in there, 123, it skipped four. Uh, must add some duplicates in my list um, out of a total of 127. So now if I go back to my page, so I tried hard to uh, to make it ask me to be admin, but Chrome remembered that I would said it. Uh, we should have all these quotes, right? So it worked perfectly. Uh, the only thing that didn't work is, is I was hoping to, to see that you had to log in, um, but uh, it, Chrome remembered that I was logged in as an admin before, uh, so that's fine. That, that or I made some small goof, I'm not that worried about it. The other thing I wanted to do is I wanted you to, to go to it again, uh, so go to import data again, uh, and just kind of look at your log messages this time. So you can see it clearly kicked off another one because it's doing its thing again. Um, but it's just saying, you know, so far zero movie quotes have been added. Um, and so you can see the second time I ran it, uh, it added zero, skipped 127 out of the 127 total. Um, this is idempotent, right? So idempotent means the first time does something, but each subsequent time has no effect. All right, so that's all I really wanted to show. I like uh, I like these tangents. Uh, this is a quick intro to task queues and a quick reason that we were wanting to use it here. Uh, come back next time. We'll do a little bit more with this app.